Tuesday, August the 1st. Uh, Council Clerk, will you please call the roll? Calling the roll, Ms. Brown? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones is absent at the moment. Mr. Miller? Here. Ms. Conwell? Ms. Conwell is absent at the moment. There is a quorum. All right. Um, with my absence from the July 18th meeting, I will await uh, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Conwell's arrival to approve the minutes. Um, let's move to matters referred to the committee, please. Resolution number 2017-0133, approving the appointment of various individuals to serve on the Cuyahoga County Soldiers and Sailors Monument Commission Board of Trustees for an unexpired term ending 11-5-2020. All right, thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Krause, if you would please uh, give us an overview of this Board of Trustees and the requirements. Oh, I'm sorry, Khalil. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. This is uh, actually a, a council appointment. Okay. Um, so the, the Soldiers and Sailors Monument uh, Board is appointed by the uh, taxing authority of the county, and so that falls on you exclusively to to uh, to. Uh, appoint the board members. Um, this is a board that is made up uh, to manage the affairs and, and take care of the Soldiers and Sailors Monument uh, down at Public Square. Um, we have two vacancies current, well, yes, two vacancies currently. Um, one due to, I believe, a, 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 one of the board members passed away. Oh. And um, the other uh, did not continue to serve. Um, so we've got two individuals that were uh, recommended by uh, the current board member, uh, Ted Prassy, and um, they are happy to serve. So I, I encourage you to, to, you know, talk to them and, and get their, their input as to why. Thank you very much. All right. Um, we will go in the order of the agenda. Is Mr. Robert P. Madison here? Mr. Madison, would you mind stepping forward? And if you'd kindly state your name for the record and give us a little bit of your background and why it is you'd like to serve on this board. My name is Robert P. Madison. Uh, I, uh, my background is I'm a Clevelander. I'm a practicing architect. No, I'm retired now, but I was a practicing architect for several years, many years. I served in World War II. I was wounded in action in Gallicano on December the uh, 26, 1944. I uh, was in the Battle of uh, the Circular Valley uh, during World War II. Then I returned. I went to school at Western Reserve University and Harvard University, and I Cali Bazaar in Paris, France, for a year. Uh, then I came back, and I was practicing architect here in Cleveland. Uh, I suppose that I can tell you that I've designed a number of buildings in the town. One was the Cahaga County Jail Two, which was uh, done about twenty years ago. I also was the architect for the. Um, for the county administration building, which was supposed to be built right here, which after a number of years, it was not built right here. And uh, I also designed the uh, county chambers, which was in the uh, Justice Center when it was first formed, the county uh, chambers. A number of my other buildings I have been the architect for is the uh, Frank J. Lopsius here, office building, the County Jail 2, Willard Park Garage, and, uh, well, I got a list of them, but uh, <laughs> I'll see them all, but just, just a few that I think would be important to hear about. Thank you. Uh, uh, I did the Waterfront Lines Transit Station, the Health Line Stations. I was the Associate Arctic on the first Energy Stadium, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Great Lakes Science Center, et cetera. The science building at CSU. I've done a number of buildings around Cleveland. I would say that uh, in thinking about my interest of serving on this, uh, this commission is the fact that uh, after the Battle of 
December 26 in Italy. Uh, this was the first group of African American soldiers in the Second World War in combat. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, they'd been used in the kitchen and service like that, but we were fighting the battle. Uh, we had a number of, I had a number of very close calls, and uh, on December 26, uh, I was wounded by a sh shell from a German 88 field gun that hit me and threw me out of the, and, uh, out of the jeep, and I was uh, picked up by some people in observation posts and to the hospital, and there I was for about three months, so I missed the rest of the battle. Fifty years later, I heard that the people of Summer Colonia had erected a monument to the Battle of December 1944 in honoring not only the patriots of the Italian campaign, but Lieutenant James Fox, who was given the Congressional Medal of Honor fifty years later. Not many got it because you, you didn't know this, you were too young to know, but we lived in a segregated society where mm -hmm. African Americans were not uh, given the right privileges as others. However, in Italy, they erected a monument to the heroic battle in honoring the Buffalo soldiers. And as I think about this monument that we have here, the Sears and Sears monument, I wonder sometimes if we really honor those people who fight battles. Because being in a war is no fun in games. I was there. And as I think about the monument we have here on Public Square, it is incumbent upon us to pay tribute to those soldiers and their offspring who fought to make this a better world. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, but uh, that's my presentation for the moment. Thank I'll you. be happy to answer any questions if you like. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Madison. Um, first and foremost, we want to thank you for your service in battle and your contributions to making Cuyahoga County what it is that we see today um, with your, your skills that you've offered as an architect. We are grateful for all of, that you have done and that you are willing to continue to do. So I will open it up to the committee at this time to if there are any questions. Uh, so we'll start with Councilman Miller and then Mr. Gallagher. Madam Chair, Mr. Madison, I just want to thank you very much for, for all your service and for being willing to uh, to serve on, on this commission. Certainly, uh, certainly you're, you're overqualified. <laughs> I mean, this, you, you've done so many huge things. Our, uh, our uh, paths intersect in a number of ways, but, but notably I was on the, uh, the initial board of the Great Lakes Science Center and, and, and continued on that board for about 20 years. And, and, and uh, uh, it, we certainly uh, have one of the premier science centers in the country with your help, so, so I, I, that's, I remember that fondly. So, uh, so I uh, I support your nomination and just want to want to say thank you for being willing to uh, give back even more and, and uh, help us with this. Thank you, sir. Let the record reflect. Councilman Jones is present. Um, Councilman Gallagher. Uh, sir, thank you uh, for participating in this, and I think, and, and especially World War II. I, if you're ever in Strongsville on Wednesdays and Fridays. 840 Chow at Scramblers on Pearl Road. I have World War II veterans there. I have two right now, 192, 193. I'm older than that. And, and, and they're as spry as you are. And, I, and, and when it was coined the greatest generation, we'll never, ever have a generation like yours again. So thank you. I consider it an honor that you're even here, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. 
I, I clearly echo my colleague's sentiments. Um, we, we would be honored to have you serve on this board. Um, so I thank you for your presentation, um, your willingness to come before us, your time, and your willingness to serve in this capacity. Um, I will grant you your, your seat if you'd like to have a seat. I don't think there are any questions that we have with regards to your qualifications or ability to serve. Um, and this will, uh, this will likely move before the full body of the committee. We still have one uh, candidate to review before I make that motion. But again, thank you so much before for your time and service. Our next nominee. Thank you. Yeah, yes, you are done. Um, our next nominee is uh, Hillary S. Taylor. Hillary, if you are present. All right, and I'm going to turn it back over to. Yo, oh, absolutely. Please, Mr. Madison, come back. Hillary Taylor, I'm surprised to see his name on the list here. He's a lawyer, right? Sure. Yes. He's been a hospital. You know that? Okay. I didn't know. No. Oh, he's been there, sir. Yeah. Okay, well, this is, this I was is something. surprised to see his name. I said, didn't look for him, but I saw him in the hospital about a week ago. Yeah, we've been we've been struggling to, to get in contact with him. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you would like to move on with this appointment in anticipation of of him getting well, or if you'd like to hold it. But we, certainly, we can do either of those options if you'd like. In the um, spirit of optimism, I'd like to move forward with the hopes of him getting well. We all have always have the option to. Um, make an amendment if necessary. Certainly. So, um, and given uh, Mr. Madison's willingness to serve and dedication and experience, um, I will make a motion that we move this to the full body of the council. Um, do we need second reading suspension? Um, well, I don't. I don't think that that's necessary. Okay. Well, then we'll move. I haven't this heard any rush. Okay. Then we'll move this to the full body of the council um, for our next meeting. If there are no second. any questions, comments, or concerns. There being none, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, thank you very much, Khalil. Um, Council Clerk, would you please read the next item? Resolution number 2017-0136, confirming the county executive's appointment and reappointment of various individuals to serve on the Cuyahoga Arts and Culture Board of Trustees for an unexpired term ending 3-31-2020. Thank you very much. And now I will turn it over to Mr. Krause to give us a little bit of background. Sure. <laughs> thank you. So um, these are two uh, submissions by the executive. Uh, one is a, an appointment, uh, Mr. Uh, Kenneth Miller, and the other is a reappointment, uh, Ms. Uh, Gwendolyn uh, Garth. Um, the Cuyahoga Arts and Culture uh, is authorized by Ohio Revised Code 3381. Uh, it's a public funder for arts and culture events, has awarded over uh, 1,200 grants to more than 300 organizations serving Cuyahoga County uh, residents. Uh, the board uh, consists of five members appointed by the executive uh, subject to uh, council confirmation. Uh, Ohio Revised Code 3381.05 outlines the qualifications for this trustees, uh, having broad knowledge and experience in the arts or culture heritage. At least two members shall be persons who devote a major portion of their time to practicing, performing, or teaching any of the arts, or who are professional administrators in the field of the arts or cultural heritage. And obviously they have to be uh, qualified electors uh, in uh, Cuyahoga County. Uh, that pretty much uh, governs uh, the qualifications. The term is a three-year term. Uh, this term uh, would be, uh, it's the unexpired term ending uh, 331 of uh, 2020, uh, just to give you briefly uh, the, uh, you know, the background. Uh, first, um, of the, uh, the appointment of Mr. Miller uh, to serve. Uh, Mr. Miller uh, is the executive editor of the Call and Post, one of Ohio's oldest and most influential African-American news outlets. Uh, the Call and Post features local, national, international news, touching uh, every facet uh, throughout uh, Ohio uh, urban life, uh, about 80,000 readers uh, in touch with their community, along with uh, the editorial responsibilities. Mr. Miller is a frequent contributor to the column post, addressing a wide variety of contemporary national uh, and local news. 
and uh, then the reappointment with uh, Miss uh, Miss Garth. Uh, Miss Garth uh, lives in Cleveland. is an independent artist and a community activist. She did uh, submit uh, a bio uh, for your, your your review. She is the founder of Kings and Queens of Art, a grassroots collaboration of artists of all disciplines, with a special focus on artists from the uh, reentry sector. And um, those are our two. Uh, uh, appointment and a reappointment. Thank you very much. Mr. Miller, will you please step forward and give us a little bit of your background and why you'd like to serve on this board? Uh, I am Kenneth Miller. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I came to uh, Northeast Ohio in 2015 uh, for the purpose of serving as the CEO and president of Call and Post newspaper. Uh, uh, good native, a good friend of mine, Connie Harper, had passed a year previously, and um, those were shoes that um, I don't think that I could ever fulfill. Uh, Connie was huge to this community. I've been involved in the African American press for over 40 years, having started in 1977 in Los Angeles. I've uh, I've, ser I've worked for a member of Congress in California. Uh, since coming here to uh, Cleveland, uh, one of the things that was really enticing about coming here was the proportionately high number of uh, minorities in poverty, uh, because that is uh, that is a situation that I come from, born and raised in South Central Los Angeles. I consider um, just the uh, the 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 recognition of being able to be in this place, a tremendous honor. It is a, um, it's the greatest honor an individual can have, which is to be in public service. It's, uh, it's a selfless act, and I truly believe that this particular foundation is one that uh, has the opportunity to be the greatest unifier that we could possibly have uh, with arts and culture. I think it's the only uh, element of our society that it's the one ingredient that could unify all of us uh, through arts and culture. I think one of the greatest schisms that we have, uh, not just within our own communities, but within our country, is that we don't understand enough about each other. And uh, there is some uh, apprehension and fear that keeps us divided in, in the way we go about our daily lives. So this organization has an opportunity uh, to be uh, the cornerstone for uh, unifying not just Northeast Ohio, but also providing a signal uh, for all of America that we can be better uh, if we are able to learn about each other and, and actually learn about the culture and uh, of each other. Thank you very much. I like the, the record to reflect that Councilwoman Conwell is now present. Uh, Mr. Miller, um, I'm going to open it up to uh, the committee for questions. Uh, we'll start on my left with Council, Councilman Jones. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Miller, for, uh, for being here today, and congratulations on coming through this part of the process. A uh, few questions. Uh, are you aware of the budget that, uh, through the um, arts and culture levy, how much that budget is? Or I say budget, but the money's generated? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, I, from what I understand, it is from the tobacco tax. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, since its, uh, since, uh, its inception, it has uh, provided, you know, over in excess of $100 million in the grants to uh, particular organizations throughout Northeast Ohio. That's correct. I, I would say approximately 12 million a year over 10 years, maybe 120 million, somewhere around there. Uh, so yes, that's correct. Uh, are you aware of the, the four largest uh, institutions that receive a significant amount of those monies? I'm not. I'm not at this time. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that, that, that I want to do is to basically um, find out who everybody is. You know, um, I, I, I had a conversation with uh, 
the reappointee for breakfast uh, yesterday morning, mm -hmm. and she had expressed, uh, you know, uh, some of the organizations that were receiving money and some that were not receiving money and, and the criteria and all of that, and that's something that uh, I have to uh, certainly be up to speed on for sure. Certainly. Uh, but I'll share with you now and help me if I miss any, but the Cleveland Orchestra, the um, Cleveland Museum of Art, uh, Idea Stream, and uh, I believe it was the Great Lakes Science Center was met, or is it Rock and or is it the Rock and Rock Playhouse Square? So those four. Did I miss any, Karen? Those are the four largest. Okay. So with those, as you mentioned earlier, uh, a way of bringing everyone together by learning from one another. Mm -hmm. Part of that learning is as these dollars move through those communities we want to learn from. <laughs> uh, the, there are many cultures here and, and communities here that uh, these dollars should flow through. So over the years, the four largest have received a certain amount of those dollars. Uh, but the uh, other communities, communities that you have served with your paper and others, uh, are beginning to start to see what I think is a, a fair amount of those dollars. So those are the things I, I hope uh, that I bring, ask each candidate to consider. How uh, to always consider the funding methods, okay? how those dollars are distributed, and find ways where they are fairly distributed, not meant to hurt anyone, whether the, the four biggest or, or the smallest in the community, but being creative and, and, and thinking about how those dollars are distributed in a way that everyone gets a, a, an opportunity to share their culture and, and art with everyone throughout Cuyahoga County. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, you know, just hearing what it is that you're saying is just from a layman standpoint, it's kind of startling that these organizations that you mentioned uh, would be at the top shelf, those four big organizations. When uh, I just so happened to have visited uh, a African-American arts museum uh, here in the community, uh, the walls were coming down and, and, and that sort of thing. So uh, I, 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 I hear exactly what it is that you're saying, and I will not serve uh, in any appointment on any board that I cannot influence the less served. And, 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 and if that means my not being appointed here, I just won't be appointed because that to me is not equity, what you just what you just shared. And so uh, I'm certainly uh, I, I'm certainly going to make sure that not so much that it's just fair share that those big organizations come off their come off their big off their penthouse suites and come down and show these other organizations just how they do it. Uh, and, and I share that with a board member yesterday. So I appreciate your comments. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Councilman Miller. Madam Chair, Mr. Miller, uh, thank you very much for volunteering to serve. I, I think you would bring a very uh, diverse and special perspective to, to this board. And uh, my question is just whether you could comment some on how you see the relationship between the arts and journalism. Well. You know, one thing I'll tell you, and, and I mentioned this to the county executive when he asked me to be, uh, to consider this appointment. Uh, the call and post is going to be separate from what it is that I do with this appointment. And uh, it has to be separate uh, because uh, if I'm going to be committed to doing this, I'm going to be committed to doing this. I think from a journalism perspective, Journalism in and of itself is is not necessarily art, but what it does do, it allows for you to be able to communicate, to communicate how you feel, where you live, and those kind of things. What I'm more interested in as it relates to this appointment is the cultural experiences. Uh, you know, those who, you know, if you if you come from Israel or if you come from Ghana, if you come from... Um, 
if you come from any other country, getting these different cultures in a room together and having them share their cultures with each other. Oftentimes, I think one of our greatest uh, shortcomings as a community and, and as a country is that we want to tell people how to act and interact with someone else when neither of us are from those various cultures. And I think that we need to give these, uh, give all of these cultures an opportunity to be in a form to where they can, they can teach each other what their differences are. And so uh, I think culturally that is one thing that is going to be very important for uh, this particular uh, organization. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from the committee? I do have one uh, question. With your, um, you expressed that you we've come from a, a background of diversity and poverty, and, and the uh, the tobacco tax is considered a regressive tax and one that is imposed on um, people in poverty. How do you? Uh, what are your thoughts as it pertains to the tax, and how would you overcome that, if you will? Well, you know. It's funny, I stand here in front of you today, and, and I used to smoke cigarettes, you know, and so um, I, I think the most important thing that, that I can do is to try to empower by educating. And oftentimes, it's not, you know, just the addiction to tobacco is never really equated with substance abuse or any other abuse, but in my opinion, it's the most powerful addiction that a person can have, and it's the most difficult one to break. Uh, and, you know, uh, the fact that this tax is going to an organization like this, I think, uh, you know, is, is, it's absolutely incredible. I don't think that having this tobacco tax support uh, this particular organization is an incentive for anyone to smoke. And I think that uh, it's important that people know that this tax is used for this particular measure. But, uh, you know, addiction to nicotine is, in my opinion, uh, one of the toughest addictions to ever kick. Okay, any further questions? There being none, thank you for uh, sharing your background and, and your willingness to serve in this capacity. Um, we will see our next appointment, and after we are done with uh, Ms. Garth, then we will make a motion to thank move. Thank you. All right, thank you again. Ms. Garth? Good morning. Good morning. You are a reappointment. I do remember you coming before us before, but if you'll remind us, a uh, little bit about your background and why you're willing to continue to serve on this uh, on this board. Okay, most certainly. Um, born and raised here in Cuyahoga County, uh, practicing artist, uh, living in the Cedar Central area at this time, um, but I also claim four neighborhoods in Cuyahoga County, uh, Cedar Central, Fairfax, Huff, and Glenville. Um, I am a I've attended uh, Cuyahoga Community College. Um, let me calm down, forget that. Okay. Um, I have my own uh, nonprofit called Kings and Queens of Art, which is a grassroots organiza organization, as was mentioned earlier. Um, I am have been the lead artist on the uh, 22nd Street Bridge uh, that we just finished, uh, the Bridge That Bridges. And why I want to uh, remain on the board is, uh, I'm gonna start with a quote from John C., who is the director of Rainforest Information Center. He says that, uh, he tries to remember, it is not me, John C., trying to protect the rainforest. Rather, I am part of the rainforest protecting myself. I prepared this statement because I find that I'm always, uh, as an activist, I find myself always advocating for other people. But when it comes to myself, I have a hard time talking about me, okay? So I applied for a position on the CAC board last year for the following reasons. I wanted to follow my vote more closely. I am a part of the rainforest of artists in Cuyahoga County protecting myself. 
I have my own art organization and I wanted to learn how best to grow it. I believe that I am the best candidate for this, one of the best candidates for this board, because even with knowing that my organization will be exempt from receiving any funding from CAC while on the board, I chose to serve anyway, willingly and passionately. I believe that you don't have to move to live in a better neighborhood. I am an artist activist born and raised in Cuyahoga County, and I have a vested interest in what happens in my hometown. I am an ambassador of the voices that you don't often hear from this close. The grassroots people, the re-entry artists, the recovering addict and alcoholic. I believe wholeheartedly in the therapeutic value of art, and my life is a pictorial evidence of that truth. I will close using uh, Lana Van Sant's working definition of creativity. It is the invisible force behind all things seen. It is the innate ability of a living element to recreate itself. It is the spiritual faculty of potentiality. It is the ability of human beings to bring forth onto the physical visible level that which is conceived at the emotional level and the mental level, whether it be consciously or unconsciously. Madam, Ch Madam Chairperson <coughs> and County Council members, somewhere deep in all of me, I have this conviction that once the artists of all disciplines in Cuyahoga County come together on common ground with a shared vision and purpose, that will begin the creative healing of the racial divide in this county. And because this county carries such political weight nationally, we can set a national racial healing trend. This is the intent, purpose, and passion with which I have served and will continue to serve the residents of Cuyahoga County. Thank you very much. Um, having served on this board for a year, and I'm going to just jump right into questions. What um, what are some of the things that you've taken away that you can share with uh, some of your counterparts? Well, um, I think I uh, have influenced. A lot of things have stopped. Um, some things have stopped, and we are regrouping. Uh, one is the individual artist fellowship work for, um, workforce fellowship. And we're regrouping that at, that at this point. And right now, some, something that has, has not happened before is we have a number of African Americans at the table. We have a number of, of people at the table who have, whose voices have not been there before, and especially African Americans. As we rewrite the new fellowship, a new fellowship, um, um, Karen, has, uh, the director of CAC, has been open to look at some changes and stuff. And so we are, um, CAC has done a listening project where they've gone on the ground listening to the people, uh, listening to people. Uh, that's one of the things that had not been done before. And uh, some there have been some changes made in the... Um, operational procedures, the operational grant, the operational programs, and with the uh, project program. The ramps to um, get a grant have become easier. It has because they have made more easy on ramps for the organizations to get there. And I feel very comfortable about uh, the uh, director and of CAC and the board being open to these changes. And we're looking at more creative ways to change things, you know, to um, to make a common ground, to balance things. You know, we're, we're looking at where what we've done wrong, where we are now, and how we can go forward. Excellent. I'm happy to hear that. Any questions, comments, or concerns from the committee? I'll start with Mr. Miller and then Ms. Conwell. Madam Chair, Ms. Ms. Guy, uh, Thank you very much for your service, and, and uh, I just sense that you have a, uh, a, a strong sense that, that prosperity is not just economic, it, it's, uh, it's social, cultural, and spiritual, and, and that uh, 
that you're doing really good work in, in uh, enabling more people in our community to uh, participate in the best that our community has to offer. And, and I, uh, I appreciate your service and support your reappointment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Councilman Panwa. Uh, through the chair to Ms. Garth, good morning. Good morning. Just one question. Has there been any conversations uh, regarding the, uh, the regressive sales tax uh, sunsetting and a possible solution going forward? Has there been any conversations in regards to that? Could you repeat the last part of that? Yeah. Um, the sales tax, it's going to sunset in, in 10 years. Has there been any conversation? The last time uh, some appointments were before us, I believe uh, members on this committee had, ex um, well, at least I did, when the last time I was up on the ballot, expressed, uh, you know, I like to think ahead of time, and even though 10 years seems like it's far away, it's not. So I was just wondering if those conversations amongst the board members had started to happen. Yes, we've had those conversations. We've been uh, trying to um, come up with some ways, looking towards um, that end, and uh, hoping to come up with some ways to uh, creatively uh, add to the pot we already have and other ways we've look at, uh, looked at. We've, um, uh, Karen invited the um, people from, um, what do they call the, <laughs> can't remember, uh, the lobbyists. And they explained to us and showed us how um, a bill, that bill came into play. So I've been kind of looking at that myself, uh, deeper into that and how, what we can do to go forward. You know, yes, we've had that conversation. I'm glad that yes. I'm just glad the conversations have started. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your uh, service. I, I love art, and the reason I love art is because I can't do it. <laughs> it was the last class I took in college, and it was the toughest class I ever took. So I, 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 I thought it would be easy, and it wasn't. Um, but when I hear this talk about balance, things like that, and I, I get a little nervous when people start bringing up not cultural things, but color things. I see color on a palette, not color in, in people. And I think what bridges that and there's other there's examples uh, all around that I think we can look at, but uh, I happen to have probably one of the large largest collections of Reverend Albert Wagner art in my in, and I hang it proudly in my house, and, and if you know him, I think he's one of the treasures of this community that hardly anyone knows about. Right. Uh, just phenomenal man, and I, and I got to know him rather well. Um, but, but he bridged that gap that I think we're all talking about here. In St. Petersburg, Florida, they're, they're considered now the, uh, the city of murals. I think they have almost 300 murals throughout the city. And there are, there are pockets where people, and my cousin's actually one of them, starting businesses, taking people around to not only the local murals, but then incorporating the local fair uh, restaurants, bars, and attractions like that. And I would hope that maybe we would start looking at that in Cleveland. It, it, I think that would be an avenue in which we could start bridging, bridging neighborhood to neighborhood and bringing folks from different parts of town into different parts of town and experiencing things that they might not would have experienced if not for art bringing them there. So just an idea. But uh, I, I hear what you're saying, and I appreciate what you're saying, but I do get a little leery when we start saying balance and balance and balance. You need to balance the art and the, and the culture, and I, and I think that's a good idea. But you guys can take that for what it's worth. But I appreciate your, your service. It's, it's uh, certainly well needed. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, congratulations, Gwen, on a, on a successful first term. Uh, you, you have served well. Um, I, I don't have too many questions for you, uh, but I think I'll take this time more to say uh, congratulations to the CAC in, in general. Um, I, I believe diversity and inclusion is, a, is something that has been needed um, when we look back at the history, but I, I'm, I'm very happy with the efforts to this point. 
uh, I think it's very evident just in, in the appointments that we've seen uh, that there is a genuine effort um, going forward. Uh, so, um, again, I just congratulate you all. I, I take the moment to, uh, to again, acknowledge Karen. Uh, the time we've spent together, I've been enjoyed in, in the work that's been going on. And uh, I just encourage you to keep doing what you've been doing. And um, I look forward to, to watching what you all do in the future. Okay, thank you. I wanted to say that, um, to Mr. Gallagher that I have a technique called spin art and that you use a salad spinner and you put uh, paint in it and an object in the middle of the salad spinner and you spin it around and you can make some instant art. <laughs> Madam Chair, no, I can't. I, I've, I've actually stood in my backyard on the ladder trying to do stuff with fans, and, and I can't do it. I don't understand it. I wish I could, but I do appreciate it. Right. Okay. Know your limitations. I, I thank everyone. Thank you, Ms. Garth. Uh, um, I would now like to uh, to make a motion to move this to the full body of the council for our next committee meeting. I don't think we need second reading suspension, Karen. We do. Okay, we need second reading suspension. So I'd like to make a motion to move this to the full body of the council under second reading suspension. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns? There being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, thank you very much. This will move to the full body of the council. Council Clerk, will you please read the next item into the agenda? Resolution number 2017-0137, confirming the county executive's reappointment of Nick Nardi to serve on the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority Board of Trustees for an unexpired term ending 2-29-2020. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Nardi could not join us today as he is the uh, chairman of the Finance Committee and they are currently having a meeting. However, in his absence, he did submit a letter to, the, uh, to this body. I think you all have a copy before you. This is, in fact, a reappointment, and Mr. Nardi does uh, bring the experience and the desire to continue to serve in this capacity. And if there are any uh, questions, comments, or concerns, um, I will ask Mr. Uh, Kraus if he wanted to share any comments as it relates to uh, Mr. Nardi's reappointment. Just um, as you're probably aware, uh, Ohio Revised Code 306 provides for the creation of the uh, Regional Transit Authority. Uh, this is the body that um, provides direction uh, for the RTA, oversight of the agency management efforts to implement policy, and they run the day-to-day -day operations of the transit system. Uh, there's 10 members uh, who are appointed uh, by City of Cleveland, Cuyahoga County Mayors and Managers Association, and uh, Cuyahoga County, and they are uh, three-year term. And just to highlight Mr. Nardi's uh, service, it's been 11 years. Uh, he's been uh, reappointed. He was appointed in 06, reappointed in 08, uh, reappointed by the executive uh, in 2011, uh, and reappointed in uh, 2014. So over those 11 years, uh, Mr. Nardi has demonstrated um, significant uh, leadership experience uh, in guiding the uh, uh, RTA board, also has 35 years of leadership uh, in uh, in the labor uh, field. So, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, any questions, comments, concerns from the committee? Yes, Mr. Miller. My question is is to Mr. Krause as to whether there's a need for second reading suspension on this item. You know, I think um, just because of the fluidity of the appointments, I would I would suggest that would be appropriate, um, and and the amount of times uh, and necessary that they meet. So yes. Also considering the fact that uh, if we don't pass it next week, then it's a full month till the following council Correct. meeting. So oh, yeah. so I think we should do that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Would you like to make the motion? I will. I will make a motion to. Uh, Refer uh, resolution 2017-0137 to the full council with a recommendation to council leadership for passage under second reading suspension. I'll second that. Any questions, comments, or concerns? There being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, this will move to the full body of the council under second reading suspension. Thank you, Mr. Krause. Council Clerk, will you please read the next item into the record? Resolution number 2017-0140, authorizing agreements with various political subdivisions for participation in the Cuyahoga County Benefits Regionalization Program for the period 1-1-2017 
through 12-31-2017. Thank you very much. And who will be speaking to this item? Will you please step forward, state your name and affiliation for the record? Ms. Woods. Good morning. Holly Woods, Director of HR for Benefits and Compensation. And um, before I get started, I am also requesting a second reading suspension for the timing as well. Good morning, everybody. So just to recap um, why we're here for these contracts, as you guys are aware, we came to you in the fall last year with a plan to restructure the regional partner program. And there were a lot of changes that needed to be done in a short period of time. So we engaged in a, a really engaging um, project to work with our partners, restructure the program, focusing on realigning participation requirements and contracts, restructuring the budgets and the rates, and really, again, focusing on the stabilization of the program to best serve our regional partners. So with that, uh, as you guys are aware, there were significant rate adjustments. We did a new banding and pooling structure to more appropriately rate the risk and the um, claims and everything that our regional partners were incurring. We had a removal of one of our carrier options for the regional program. The UHC option was no longer going to be available to them. It was only going to be through Medical Mutual and Metro. We did not require any mandatory changes to coverage level, levels, but because we were making changes to the plan in general, that was a big change for our regional partners when they were considering renewing. We required a re-enrollment of all plan participants with our regional partners, similar to our dependent audit, again, trying to start from a clean slate, making, making sure that even with our regional partners, the appropriate people were covered by the plans and everybody had updated information, e even in our regional, regional partner um, system and databases. We made adjustments to administrative fees. We made changes to the contracts, changing from previously they were three-year contracts to a one-year contract. With that, a number of our regional partners were in the midst of a three-year contract, and we were rewriting all contracts to do it on an annual basis so that they could better evaluate every year if they were going to remain or they were going to stay in the program again because there were a lot of changes that we were making. So with that, it took some time, of course, looking at the timeline we provided the renewals to our regional partners in late September, and of course renewals happen late because you have to look at all of the claims expenses and do all of the fun actuarial stuff to get the claims and re renewal rates. So renewals went to the regional partners in late September. We did ask for the status if the regional partners were going to stay or leave by the end of October. And again, there were such significant changes. Of course, there were we were requested to give some extensions on that deadline. Regional partners asked for, for some more time, and council members also asked to extend that deadline as well. So that takes us into the end of 2017, um, just working through contracts and if the partners were going to stay or go. Um, we did request that they notify us in writing so that we would have essentially in writing if they were going to stay while we worked on the contracts, which are before you today. So just want to kind of lay out that plan of why we're here in July. There was a lot going on. There were a lot of changes. And then getting all of those contracts back. So even some of our regional partners are made up of multiple municipalities. So by the time it went through, one um, uh, one mayor or a municipality, it had to go to two more and get everybody's signature. So there's a lot of timing in there um, to, to take us into July and why we have the contracts here for you today. So again, just wanted to kind of lay that out. So we do, we are engaging with the regional partners currently. They do have the services. This is to finalize those contracts and the services have been provided to uh, back to January. And since we're already approaching year end, we'll start this process for the next year as well. Any questions? Thank you very much, Councilwoman Conwell. Through the chair to Ms. Woods, uh, you spoke about adjustment <clears throat> to the fees. Did the fees go up or down? They did both. It just <clears throat> depended on the situation for the regional partner. So historically, the rates were all set at one amount for all regional partner, and at that, of course, did not take into account those regional partners that had low claims or a healthy population, they might be paying more. 
and those municipalities that had higher claims on healthy population might be paying less. So there was restructuring, there was rebanding, and it was a variety of some solid reduction, some solid increase, which is why some of the regional partners decided to leave as they shot for different rates and, and looking for different plans to engage in. So basically previous claims drove the change. Correct, yeah, they do, of course, the, the calculations to look at the loss ratio, run out claims, claims throughout the year that go into the next year. So we have an actuary that works with the vendors to take a look at that and do the analysis to, to, to determine what the new rates are. Um, you spoke about re-enrollment for um, partners. Um, was there more enrollees or less? So with the changes, we ended up having um, we lost about half of the regional partners during the restructuring. So it was less in the sense that we went from about 20 regional partners down to 10. And then, um, you know, in those plans, you saw some numbers fluctuate, just as with any company when enrollment comes up, um, if they choose other plans. So we saw less just because we lost 10 of our regional partners. Okay. And do we, um, I know before it was kind of like an open process and, um, new regional partners could come on. Are we sort of carrying on like that where we're open, the door is open for new regional partners to join those that may have been with us before? How does that look? Sure. So we have really just been focusing on stabilization with everything um, to, to get the structure in place. This year, again, we've really been just focusing on stabilizing the program, but we have been approached by other municipalities who are interested in partnering with the county and, and joining the regional partnership. So we have a, a benefits advisory committee that's been established. We'll be meeting with them and looking at rolling out new program participation requirements and, and how that process will begin. So it is in consideration for next year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, Ms. Woods, for, first a comment. Uh, uh, this is this is a good uh, good example of not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, this this program ran into some serious problems, and and uh, and and we could have thrown up our hands and said we're not going to do this anymore. But the fact remains that that this is. Uh, this is a good concept. It's it's uh, it's a very good form of collaboration, and and uh, and it's a good thing that we've decided to uh, correct the problems and and get this program back on the right track. You mentioned that there's we're down to nine partners, there's, or to ten partners. There's nine listed here. What? Who's the tenth, and why aren't they listed here? So we have one entity which. They are in a unique situation. It's the um, Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and they, although they participate in what I what we call the regional program, they're almost a standalone. They're they're self insured. You, you know, with our regional program, the entities are. Um, it's a conglomerate with the county and with the Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities, they have a completely separate contract because they're self-insured. So they're still going through their own process mm -hmm. and that'll be forthcoming on, on, on that one. But that's why it's different. But yes, we are down um, to 10. It is 10. And how many additional partners have expressed interest for 2018? Right now, I know of two that have approached us with interest in, in joining. And uh, how much optimism that, do you have that, that most or all of the 10 that you currently have will be back with us for another year in 2018? That's a tough one to answer simply because it comes into when the claims are evaluated at year end and where the renewal is going to be. So, you know, if, if someone has seen a very high year of claims and they're going to see a spike they, it's the potential that they have to go and, and shop another program. Mm -hmm. I do stand by our program and, and just the purchasing power that we have. A number of the entities I think that even left us um, this year 
may notice that while they might have gotten a low rate for one year since they've left, that they, they're probably going to see higher rates moving forward. That's typical in the healthcare industry. You switch plans, your rates might go down, but in the end, they might increase even more. So, you know, it, it, it truly depends on the individual entity and what their claims look like. But I'm also confident in the ones that have stayed have seen the rewards of participating in the program and have realized that, you know, even if they do have a, a high year, that it's advantageous to stay with us and, and let the program run out. Uh, Madam Chair, Ms. Woods, what's, what's the current projection on how the regional partner program is going to fare financially in 2017? Is, is it is it break even? Is there going to be a positive variance? Is it going to be be in the red? What's it looking like? Sure. So, you know, healthcare is almost like gambling. One day you're up, and the next day mm. you're down, depending on how the cards fall and how the claims come out. Um, right now we're running well. We, when we restructured the budget and and the rates, we built in um, this the reserve that we're trying to build up over the next few years. So right now the the projections are good, but again, you know, it it it's going to be a balance through the remainder of the year, but I'm confident that the way we've structured this program for the remainder of the year, we're not going to get in a situation where we were in previous years where the county is looking at any deficits or anything that we need to make up from that. So, uh so are you saying that at this point you think you're going to be able to achieve the reserve addition that you had in mind for 2017? I believe we'll either be there or be close to it. Again, it, it, it does depend on what the claims oh. look like, but yes, I, I think we'll be on target. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Brown, to the board. I, I went to your first comment. You know, it was it was very important when we sat down with the executive that this program remain intact. So I, I appreciate the comment because we do believe it's a good program, and with the restructuring, that it's going to even grow from here after we've we've reached the stabilization period. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I think we all um, feel the same way that this was a. A, a wise choice and a, and a good decision for the collective whole. Um, I do have one request that I would like to make, and that is if you could prepare um, a report of the benefits um, audit that was performed, the benefits eligibility audit that was performed last year, mm -hmm. the success of that. Um, our next meeting will be September 19th, likely. Um, so if, if we could um, attempt to have something prepared by then, that gives you a little over about a month and a half. Sure. Um, and uh, are there any questions, comments, or concerns from the committee? If there are none, um, I'd like to make a motion as you requested to move this to the full body of the council under second reading suspension. Do I have a second? There's been, it's been moved and seconded. If there are no additional questions, comments, or concerns, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Woods. Um, I would like to move back on the agenda to the approval of the minutes. Hopefully, uh, in my, again, I was absent and um, could not move this forward. So I'd like to have someone make a motion to move. Uh, Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, no questions, comments, or concerns. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, the minutes have been approved. Uh, is there any miscellaneous business from the com committee? I'd just like to uh, to bring up a question uh, that since it's since it's a, f a full month for our next full council meeting after this one. Uh, is there any thought of going back to the uh, the first item and also recommending that that one be passed on second reading suspension so we can move that along? Um, given that we are having uh, less meetings in August, I do not disagree with your uh, recommendation and would um, agree to move this to the body. So do we need to... How should we move forward? Do you want to, I was going to say, do you want to withdraw your um, earlier motion? Let's withdraw, withdraw this. Can I ask one question? Yes, yes uh, One of the applicants was not present. Um, does giving the three readings give, give that person time if they're convalescing? Uh, we don't know yet if they're still hospitalized, if that's the case, or... And, 
Yeah, I appreciate where you're coming from. I think again with the the opportunity, this is this is a board that we come um, that we comprise, so we have the flexibility to make the necessary adjustments. So, in the unfortunate event that something does uh, not uh, happen with Mr. Taylor, that he's uh, unable to provide documentation or um, support his candidacy, we have the option to, and I'll turn it over to Khalil, we have the option to... Certainly. If, <laughs> if uh, I think by the time you meet uh, the next council meeting, we will have the information as to whether or not it will be necessary to amend the legislation. So I think if you did want to pass it on uh, under second reading suspension of the rules, we can we can accommodate that. Okay, good. Because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to hold up the enthusiasm and experience of Mr. Madison and his his uh, willingness and uh, great deal of wealth of knowledge to to serve on this committee. So, we will move this. Uh, I'll make a motion to move. I withdraw the first motion, and then I like if you want to make the motion, Mr. Miller. Uh, I'll move to uh, recommend resolution twenty seventeen. 0133 to the full council with recommendation to council leadership that we put it on the agenda for second reading suspension. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any further questions, comments, or concerns? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. This will move to the full body of the council under second reading suspension. Thank you, Mr. Miller, for that recommendation. Is there any other miscellaneous business? Any public comment related to the agenda? No, Madam Chair. Sure. And... This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.